So your fur is all going to lay in a similar direction. This is also referred to as nap, if you've ever seen that on your pattern before where it says with nap or without nap. So fur has a nap. Um, mine feels smooth running this way, but when I go this way, it kind of catches. You can see that a little bit with the wrinkling, but when I go this way, it's all nice and smooth. So I wanna make sure that my pattern pieces are laying, first of all, all in the same direction. So with the shoulders, of the bodice pieces and the top of the sleeve and all of that up in this direction um, pointing with the hems all being down here that way when i'm wearing it and like you know i rub my hand down the jacket um, it's going to be nice and smooth and not all rough okay so because the double layers of the um, fur is so thick and also kind of plush. Um, I didn't think that pins would be very helpful. So I have put down all my pattern weights and it's also very smooth and shifty. So even if you nudged it just the littlest bit with your scissors or your rotary cutter, I also felt that it could easily get askew. So what I did is I just simply took a regular marker um, I did try my Taylor's chalk that didn't produce much of a line that I could see because my backing is kind of already has that white color to it. But um, I did trace around it with the pink marker and you guys can see there is a line right there for the upper collar. Um, you also, you know, mark all your circles and your dots and your notches and everything else with the marker and that's going to keep your... Uh, pattern lines, uh, cutting line, very accurate. So cutting fur is really messy because as you can imagine, when you cut a line through your fabric, it's gonna end up cutting all these little furs. It's gonna cut them away from this backing of the fabric. So if you have super, super long fur, um, I would recommend cutting everything on a single layer and trying to wedge your scissors in between the pile. Um, so if you have like a long strand, kind of pulling back some of those strands and cutting through the strands. My pile is really small or short and it also kind of goes in all kinds of different directions. So there's not much I can do other than make a mess, which is completely fine, mildly annoying, but such is life whenever you are working with a fur fabric. Okay, and when it comes to cutting, I just wanted to weigh it down a lot so that the fur itself didn't shift around while I was cutting. I needed to make sure that, you know, both sides were gonna be symmetrical. So I just put down as many pattern weights as I could. I even weighted it down with this tray and I used super, super sharp scissors to cut, you know, around the line that I had marked with the pin. I am also only going to cut the pieces that are intended to be cut on the fold on two layers. The pieces that are intended to be cut and have two separate mirrored images of them, like the front and the sleeve, I am going to cut on a single layer because my fabric has kind of like a stripe to it and I wanna make sure that I get that stripe placement kind of symmetrical across the entire front. Um, and as well have the sleeves kind of mirror each other with regard to the stripe placement. But that's just with my fur. If your fur has like an all over um, color um, scheme, then cut into layers and you should be fine. Okay, and as I get my pieces cut, because the pile is so short, you can see I'm getting all of this like furry fuzz stuff. So I'm rolling it up gently and I'm carrying it outside to shake it out. Watch. 
it's like snowing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Fur everywhere. So after a while you get most of it out and at least it's outside and not in your sewing room. Okay, so I've got one front piece cut out the exact same way I just showed you. And I'm trying to, you know, match up this, you know, variant that is producing what looks kind of like stripes on my fabric. So you can't see through the fabric, so it's kind of difficult to match up. But what I'm doing is I'm peeling back like the top, like the shoulder and the hem, and then just trying to eyeball kind of where these white parts are landing um, across the bottom. So I feel like I have that. And then the same thing across the top, just making sure that this part doesn't end up over on top of a white part. It's not gonna be exact, um, but it'll be close enough for me. So now obviously I can also not trace um, around here with the pin onto the fur, that won't work. Um, so I'm just going to weight it down with all of my pattern weights, try not to shift it at all, and just cut around the edges um, with my scissors. Um, very carefully, very slowly, little snips at a time. Okay, and once you get all your pieces cut out, you need to clean up. I like to just take a regular water bottle and an old dirty washcloth and spray the washcloth down and then wipe the area carefully. And then you can go shake this rag out outside the same way that you did your fabric. Um, and then you also need to wipe down anything that you used, like my ruler and my scissors and there's even fur on the tip of this pen. And then after all that's done, you need to go take a shower because that's the only way you're gonna get all of this stuff off of your body. <laughs> so it's a little bit annoying to work with, but it's gonna be so worth it, I promise. Okay, and so now we are ready to stitch and I do have a couple suggestions there as well. Um, okay, so this is the shoulder seam. I have placed a ton of pins in here. And remember, you are lining up the backing. So like if the hair's long and it sticks out, just try and line up the raw edges of the backing and not the fur um, because you wanna make sure you get that perfect 5 8 seam. Okay, so then you're gonna go to your machine. You're gonna stitch your seam. I like to use a larger stitch length. Uh, I think I have mine set at like four millimeters. I also use a walking foot, and that's just to make sure that the top layer and the bottom layer kind of move through the machine at the same time. Then, once you have your seam like I have here, so here is the other shoulder seam that I have stitched right here. You want to, on the right side of the fabric, take a pen and anywhere where the fabric is like, or where the fur is like, um, you know, kind of pushed in, you want to get into that seam using a straight pen and you want to pull the little hairs out of the seam. And then you'll also see, because my hair is short, I also have some hairs that are sticking up through the other side. So I just went again on the seam from the other side and pulled those out. So really what I'm doing is just trying to make sure as best I can that the only thing that is stitched, the only thing that the thread is catching is the backing and as little bit of the hair as possible. Okay, and then my final tip on working with fur is for your seam allowances. So my jacket is gonna be completely lined, but I do wanna make sure that the seam allowances are flat and they stay flat forever. So I am just simply placing a bead of liquid stitch. You could also use like rubber cement or any kind of permanent um, glue that is okay for fabrics. 
So I am just placing a small bead on the wrong side of the fabric and then just pressing it down and holding it closed. So this is going to take 24 hours to completely bond. Um, I've done, I did this side a little bit ago and it's kind of coming up a little bit. So you just want to make sure that you just get it on there, get it pressed really good with your fingers and then just kind of let it be for a day and it should um, stay flat and pressed together forever. I'm not ever going to wash this, but even if you were going to wash it, I think it holds up in the wash as well.